Okay, I think that means we are live. Uh, and here we've got, I found the face that goes with the mystery Hi. voice that showed up <laughs> at the end of the previous session. Um, uh, and so that was, uh, that's good. Um, maybe everyone I'm can confirm that they're, that they're, hear me they're seeing to my and hearing kids. us. Yeah, no, we, we were, I'm afraid we did pick up a little bit of that, but it was it was all good. It was all good. You know, I thought it was a nice it was a nice challenge for Josh, the previous presenter, to forge on with his presentation. <laughs> all good. I know that Josh yeah. has got a lot to say about his product, which is uh, awesome. I know um, yes. ASU is a pretty heavy partner of Pantheon usage there too. We have awesome. a bunch of our sites from ASU Engineering in their platform and and leveraging Very all cool. of the goodness that comes there. Yeah, they've, they've, uh, Pantheon has been coming up a bunch uh, across the sessions today. So uh, I'm sure Josh is very pleased with that. Um, okay, so my plan is to pop myself off stage, Steve, okay. um, which I'll do now. And then you should be able to share slides if you've got anything like that. You'll be able to I do. Uh, do that. Uh, I do happen to have some slides. Uh, Great. Uh, we've got about 20 minutes. Um, there'll be folks uh, asking questions, so I'll come in at the end and uh, we'll, we'll gather those questions up if there are any and uh, we can run through those. Um, all right. Sounds good. Uh, Great. Okay. Well, I shall uh, mute myself and, uh, and let you uh, introduce yourself and your session. Thanks very much. Sure. Yeah. So um, hopefully everybody can, uh, can see what I have going on here on the screen. Um, my name is Steve Ryan. I work for Arizona State University, specifically with uh, ASU Engineering. Uh, I joined ASU Engineering in 2016 uh, as a part of their marketing and communications team. Uh, I'm focused on uh, doing WordPress development. Um, we are, I'm the, the single code uh, wrangler of one on our team, making sure that all of the portfolio of sites that we manage in ASU Engineering is um, are up to date and uh, useful. Um, ASU Engineering is the largest, uh, most comprehensive engineering program in the United States. We enrolled about 31,000 students in fall 2023, a whole bunch of undergraduate programs and graduate programs across eight different schools of engineering. So every engineering discipline is represented someplace within our portfolio of uh, programs. Today, I'm going to be talking in, uh, in a lot about um, a particular event that we do within ASU Engineering called the Forge Expo. It is a massive presentation of student research that happens twice a year, so once every semester, uh, and incorporates findings from a bunch of different programs, research programs on campus, and usually features between you know, 80 to 120 uh, students in a room talking to each other about the different projects that they have uh, done research about. Um, it's a pretty remarkable thing. It is always my favorite time of year to go and be totally impressed by how smart our students are and how not uh, not super smart that I am in comparison. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, that particular event in, in the context of a website that we built to actually support what happens at that event. So uh, this is an open invitation to uh, to open another tab. Uh, go to forge.engineering.asu.edu. Um, uh, uh, I hesitated to put a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, screenshots and things into this presentation. I figured it was just better to let the audience just go click around in the site while I'm talking about it. If you have questions, I would love to, to answer them during the session. But um, again, forge.engineering.asu.edu is the sort of showcase that we're going to be talking about today. And in particular, I'm going to tell a little bit of a story in the beginning about how we built this website and what it's about, right? Um, how we go from print to digital. Uh, the model that we use to actually talk about uh, uh, of how we built it, right? Some of the features and, and uh, some of the other things that we've uh, kind of bumped into along the way and, and how we got to where we are. So um, our story begins uh, with a print publication that we had used previously to support what happens in this particular event. So uh, we uh, uh, previously we had actually made this publication to make sure that we uh, have a record of all of the different presentations and things that are in um, uh, uh, that uh, that have gone on there. And you can see that uh, we have generally just a, a page that actually just talks a little bit about the, the students that are there. And this was the, the sort of way that we celebrated this particular event, right? We created this publication uh, to give everybody just a, a, a sort of keepsake about, yeah, you did it, you present, you know, this is what we presented and this is the entire record of what happened there. Um, 
along the way, we decided that that print publication no longer met our needs for what we wanted to get out of the presentation. Um, the person that's on the screen here, her name is Stephanie Maybe. She was the uh, communications director when the project was started, uh, a little or when our website was started, and uh, I got a, a kind of feedback from her that really what we were doing with our publication was telling a story and, and making a memento that students could take away. But we had an opportunity with some changes that were happening in the program to actually change the print publication as well as change the entire way that we were using the information to actually tell this particular story. So um, upon changing the print publication, this is what the new publication looked like at the time. Uh, this is circa 2017 when we changed our formatting. And you can see right away that there's a, quite a bit of, of a difference between the two things, right? We, we lost a lot of the density for what actually happened, like the, the sort of record of every student's contribution to that was reduced to just, hey, this is what you did, this is what the title was. But it, it, replacing the, that information was a whole new emphasis on, on storytelling, on getting some bigger, brighter pictures, letting students see different experiences of other people doing actual research there. So we have some brilliant photography. We introduced a lot of new, um, a lot of new icon uh, language, a lot of new colors and things into our print publications. So about the time that we switched from one print publication to another, we also knew, hey, we should do something digitally to make sure that it, we are still an accurate reflection of things that are going on. There. So. Uh, when we scoped out the, that website initially with what we were going to build and how we were going to build it, we knew that we wanted to do maybe three or four things like in, in, uh, with what we were going to do. Right. So um, going back to that older sort of uh, yearbook looking uh, uh, slide that I put of our print publication up there, we want to know that we, we, we wanted to keep all of that data. Like it was important for us to make sure that we had an archive of not only the project, but the project's abstract. Uh, we added some some additional pieces of information together and sort of keep all of that together in a way that preserved all of the old information. Like we didn't want to just lose it and let it go off into Never Never Land. But we knew also with the with the um, with a move to to digital rather than just print for what we were doing with this particular project, we knew that we had an opportunity to to tell this story in a different way. We had an opportunity to actually talk about and uh, like over elapsed time. Um, you know, print publications are good for one moment in time. So we have a, a print publication. It was a map of the exact moment that we did this. But with the digital publication, we could tell that story over a longer period of time and start to understand the story arcs and the different types of projects that were going across multiple semesters, which is really cool. We knew that we wanted to feature a lot of the new artwork, as much as the new artwork and uh, you know, color choices and icon language as we could in our site. And then also we wanted to share some of the responsibilities for like making all of this happen among a bunch of different people within ASU engineering. Uh, previously, it was sort of like a bottleneck for people on our team to wrangle the information, to proofread it, to publish it, to send it to the printer and be done with it. Now though, with the move to digital, we could actually explore how to share some of the responsibilities for how to wrangle this information together among different people. So when we were doing that, we decided, okay, this is, we're gonna make sure that WordPress is at the core of that. Uh, uh, I tell the story about WordPress with WordPress in the center of it, but it, we were a WordPress forward shop anyway. So WordPress was a natural fit. But one of the reasons that I think that that is an important story to tell is that it, there is a definite trap that you can get into if you are not used to using WordPress as a tool, as a platform. Um, and that's, you know, doing things in the default way, right? So uh, one, of the, one of the issues that I talk about a lot with, with people in the WordPress world is this, this kind of trap about, okay, well, how do you wrangle your content to what comes in with WordPress out of the box? But what, re what people don't realize is that the WordPress has two default content types, but really WordPress is a platform that is extendable in a bunch of different ways. And it is, a, a, it is, very, very useful to understand how WordPress's extendability can take the information that you have in your particular place and, uh, and make it happen in a different way. So um, like the example on this slide here that you can get into some nitty gritty details, like if I had to take this information that was in our previous publication, start like pushing it into what comes out of WordPress as default, like is this a tag, is this a category? 
you can very quickly see that you're going to run out of space. Like you're going to run out of like a uh, uh, ways to organize all this information uh, without learning how to extend it. So when we did our development of the site, we started with the clean slate and said, we're just going to pretend that nothing exists in WordPress and develop a, a model of like what we wanted to build and, and really sort of understand it in that way. Um, we knew that we wanted uh, some instance of a participant, you know, with demographic data, social media stuff. Um, those are the people that we wanted to feature the most, the students that are participating in the symposium. Um, and then we also had a reflection of these projects that, you know, that, that are going on, and we wanted to understand the relationship between those two. Uh, our symposium model was such that we knew that multiple, that the same participant could have multiple projects across different places. So that was... Uh, uh, a very interesting uh, thing. So uh, when we got into understanding what that model was, it was really easy to sort of map what that model looked like to the different WordPress-y kind of things that exist in the ecosystem um, so that we could extend WordPress to do the things we're going to do. And that's all like, you know, that's work that developers do naturally on the back end, but I think it's, it's an important story to tell for people who may not necessarily be developer oriented, but certainly become product owners or content uh, providers in uh, uh, in the future to understand that yeah we can extend WordPress to do these kind of different things and this is these are the types of things that we're going to build so that if I happen to like say something like I'm going to make a custom post type in the middle of like a normal conversation people don't go cross-eyed and say well what is that right um, the one of the important things about all of this really is that all of these things that I'm talking about custom post types taxonomies custom fields, like a lot of these things have been in WordPress for a really long time. Like I had to go back and, and look at the version number to realize that custom post types and taxonomies have been there since, since 3.0. That was, uh, I think, circa 20, 2012, 2011, something like that. So it, they've been there for like a good long time, um, it, which means that the extendability that WordPress offers is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's baked into core and is really easy to access and do. Um, the other piece of the puzzle that was that was uh, fundamental, I think, to to talking to people about WordPress and understanding like how do you extend it, what does it do, is this super duper old school complicated diagram, right? <laughs> uh, it's not important to understand like what is in this diagram. It's just important to understand that the diagram itself exists, right? This just speaks to again some internal things that are happening in WordPress, and really the story that I tell with this particular. Uh, this particular slide here isn't that that WordPress is um, uh, that you have to know all of this in order to build with it. It's that WordPress does things out of the box for you to really, really help your 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 choices, right? So if I, I you know as a theme developer, as a plugin developer, I know that if I build a thing at like taxonomy dash taxonomy term dot php, the WordPress is going to know what it is that I'm trying to do. And is going to give me a bunch of information and a bunch of stuff that happens automatically just by putting that template together. Now, obviously, you can extend these templates to do nearly anything you want to do, and that's part of the fun of being a developer. But it's one of those one of those things that that is super helpful to understand is that WordPress's extendability offers a lot of these different avenues for being able to do this. So, um, I'm going to fast forward a whole bunch of time in the interest of time and say, we launched it and we did a good job <laughs> of making it happen, right? Uh, hopefully that as you're clicking in the site, uh, in the background here, you get an experience of what it is that we built and how we put everything together and how that, that sort of data model works in, in the different ways. Um, I'm, I'm certainly happy to share live uh, what that website looks like here in just a second if we have time. But uh, one of the things I did want to talk about, you know, in, in, in kind of moving forward is like, okay, so how do we... How do we make how do we make the thing that we made better right like it was it was a definite uh, a definite effort to launch the website with these with the intent immediately uh, to understand that this is going to be a continuous process of just making little improvements making small things you know small changes to different things um, and overcoming challenges along the way so WordPress again plays a, a pretty central role in all of that like the, the, the the strength of the platform is being is allowing us to do some different things to, to make sure that this all happens right so we built some some taxonomy meta information that allows us to like click on and off the different search results in the site to really give people that are looking at the website an experience of the current symposium are these 200 projects and we have a bunch of other ones in the archive but we can roll that over almost immediately just by clicking a button or two related to the actual date of the taxonomy 
and say, okay, now that this is the active one and all the rest of these are off, like almost everything in the site changes and, and, uh, and rolls over to the next one. So that was kind of a fun, fun feature to build. We also did the, uh, hey, how do we get more information in here <laughs> dance? Um, we started off with the way that every good developer does. I just imported a bunch of things directly into the database, I think, maybe from a CSV file. But we knew that, that there were going to be challenges with that moving forward in terms of like preserving information and also making sure that that uh, all of the, the uh, processes for creating these, these posts and, and uh, content types in there were, were sustainable in the future. So one of the things that we did uh, a little further down the road is make sure that we had a process where students themselves could actually submit information to this website, and they have to do that as a part of the programs that they're in. So they they provide us their abstracts and their impact statements and things, and we go through a proofreading process to make sure that that's accurate and understandable, and also really dumb things like making sure the students have spelled their names correctly and like have the like a degree program that actually exists. Like it's amazing how you have to do that, but. <laughs> But sometimes you do, <laughs> um, and uh, you know. So this this form actually helps us actually get that data into the website, you know, based on student input, which is great. So um, we so this the website actually was built prior to Gutenberg, uh, several years prior to Gutenberg, and so we had that moment where we had a really big sort of you know really big collection of stuff that we had to then figure out what we were going to do with, right? So the block editor changed a lot about the way that WordPress is supposed to work. Um, developers that are listening to this talk can probably already understand that we lean backwards and not forward into things like the block editor early. Uh, but one of the things that I, uh, one of the stories about WordPress that I will also tell here is that WordPress is like fanatically backwards compatible, which is super, super uh, encouraging, I think, as a developer to understand that, look, even though things are going to change with this platform into the future, we knew that the stuff that we had built uh, in the old school, you know, uh, post editor kind of way would still be available and working as WordPress's core changed, which allowed us to do things like integrate, you know, do blocks and new different page designs and things into the site in a more gradual and natural way, as opposed to like a full stop moment where you had to like drop a 2.0 version of the site and move on. Like it was, it was something that, that happened naturally and we could count on WordPress to sort of be working like that in the background, which is kind of cool. So um, uh, COVID happened. Uh, uh, we, 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 like everybody else in the digital world, I think we had to adapt a lot to like, okay, what does that world look like? And, and right, remarkably, WordPress's ability to sort of, uh, uh, I'll call it do cartwheels and handstands really helped us in, in this particular event. We shifted the, the archive that you see now from like an archive and a, and a digital record of everything to the actual driver of the in-person uh, of the virtual events when we needed to do that. And again, that was uh, it was due to some taxonomy meta and some other uh, bells and whistles that we put in the back end to very quickly turn on and off a, a, a curated set of Google links. But uh, I'm sorry, curated set of like Zoom links to, to, to run all of our conferences together. But what was a really interesting output of all of that is that like when we did all of that and we did the work the right way, it created an experience that was remarkably similar to the experience of going up to another student in the lobby and saying, tell me about your project and engaging them in that way. Zoom was a good vehicle for that. And it, and it, it worked actually really well to sort of make sure that the experience was similar, but just in a different modality. Um, and, you know, central to that process was, was some quick development cycles. We were able to get in there, iterate very quickly on what we needed to do in response to what was happening in the world. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and it just worked out really well. So um, we obviously uh, incorporated a bunch of stuff into the site for custom blocks and meta. We um, have a bunch of new development going. I'm going to skip over a couple of these things in the interest of time here. But we definitely um, are creating more engagement on the faculty side of things by like telling better stories about our faculty and mentors using different blog templates and things like that. Uh, we're also pulling in data to make their, their profiles more enriched, and tell us more about where they're at and what they're thinking. Um, and all of that happens again with WordPress's sort of extendability there. Um, I'm going to very good, like, so when we did this work, right, like, why, why do I feel comfortable talking about this, right? <laughs> why are we doing this? Um, we, we, we built this, like, archive showing, that, that shows this, that our commitment to, like, what student research at ASU Engineering should really look like. 
and and I think that the digital version of this does a really really good job again of telling that story over time, and saying not only are you contributing to this moment in time, but you're one of now, you know, uh, 19 different events that we've done in this arc of events that we've done over you know 1,500 projects are in this archive of stuff. Um, so, uh, and you get to contribute to that in, in something that, that moves forward, right? It's definitely more than a memento of like a singular achievement. It's, it's multiple achievements across multiple programs. Um, and then the, the, one of the key things that I take away from our university is that, the, that, uh, that WordPress can do all of this kind of development. We are, we are not a WordPress forward university. Uh, ASU Engineering has a bunch of WordPress sites that we do a bunch of our stuff with. And so this in our back pocket is a showcase and a really shining example of, hey, WordPress can do a lot if you know how to extend it and do the things you're asking it to do. Um, that's basically the same kind of stuff I just said before. Uh, I know that that was like super duper fast. So I'm going to just stop sharing. I'm going to go back and look at your faces here. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to see if you guys have uh, uh, any questions about what it was that I talked about or anything you clicked on in the website uh, in the background. Love that, Steve. Thanks very much uh, yeah. for taking the time. Uh, I'm just clicking through. No one's submitting any questions into the QA. I do see some appreciation in the chat, so that's great. Um, if you do have questions, folks, get them in quick. Um, uh, if not, Steve, how to, is, is there a way for people to follow up with questions after this session? You absolutely can follow up with questions. Uh, you guys can yeah. find me. Uh, you're going to hear about an organization called WP Campus, I think, in the next session. Uh, yes. That is a, a organization that I... Uh, of a support and they definitely support me as a developer uh, in this particular world. So you can absolutely find me in the WK campus Slack, uh, best place to find me there for questions about what we built and how we're following up. Brilliant. Okay. And we do have one question uh, just submitted. So let's, uh, let's answer that for uh, Aram. Do the students submit posts as their info uh, asks Aram? Yes, they do. So uh, again, uh, highlighting that, um, I can even probably put the, the URL in the chat as I'm talking about yes. it, but highlighting that, um, highlighting the form that I just, uh, that I outlined like super, super quickly <laughs> in the slides there. Uh, we, uh, rather than have the students actually log in as users on the back end of the site to actually do the data entry, um, mm. That would be a little bit complicated because they have to, they would have to be making two different sort of objects in WordPress and then do something special to like tie them together. That's that post to post relationship that we had kind of built that ties those things together. So instead, what we did was we made a form that actually makes it a more natural experience for students to like submit their information to us. That form uh, that we had built actually makes dr uh, draft posts in the background of our custom Sick. post types so that we can then go in and review the information. It's ready to go for our editorial staff to, to kind of make sure that everything, again, is spelled right and the students click the right buttons and things in the form. But um, that's, the, that's how we get the information into the site to begin with and sort of do all that. Very cool. There are questions flying in at the end. So uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll squeeze the next one in too. Why not? While yeah. we've got the opportunity of Steve here. Uh, what are your thoughts about full site editing? Do you think it's viable for sites such as the Student Work Showcase? Yeah. How, how, have you guys looked at full site editing much yet? Yeah. So we're, um, we're behind that curve, I would say. We are not fully mm. embracing the full site editing thing just as a matter of fact, actually, most of the things, the, the, the custom post types and things that I saw demo there are not even using the block editor for the most part. They're right. still using custom fields and, and the super old school way of doing things. Mm. Um, I do think that full site editing is in our future to build more interactive showcases to, to, to really do things like in a, in a more forward way. I also know that there's some, like even outside of full site editing, there's bits and pieces of that puzzle that I know that we'll reference soon. The interactivity mm, API nice. is was one of those that's got my it's got my attention. Like the uh, yeah. our our experience at the symposium website where things move around and shift and shuffle that is streaming for that interaction. So I'm looking forward to actually digging in there, building that, and and, and doing some more fun stuff. Nice, yeah. And the human made side, I don't think we've specifically used full site editing in a student work like showcase context. Um, definitely, we've definitely seen, you know, it's, it, if you're already using the block editor, that's, that's a much easier transition than like, it's like, it makes sense, I think, to go like one, one, two step rather than go all in. Um, but in the, in the, uh, in the, the places where we have been using it, 
the Harvard Gazette actually was an example of where, where, where full siding was utilized. Um, we've definitely been seeing some, some really nice improvements in terms of just like the amount that that enables then the team to do without needing to drop back down into a developer, which is, uh, which is pretty neat. Um, all righty. Uh, well, I think, uh, was it your kids at the beginning, Steve? I, my kids have just walked in. so uh, Very they're... likely my kids in the background. Uh, like doing stuff yeah, my, <laughs> mine have just arrived too. So um, we like that. That uh, shows we're all human and we're figuring this out as we go. Um, okay, well, thanks very much for, for joining us today, Steve. Really appreciate that. Um, sure. I'm going to um, wave goodbye, pop you off stage.